Do you do you think there's still a role for the super heavyweight there, Jay? Yeah, we do. That's uh, one of the reasons we acquired Brian McGratton last year and re-signed him this summer when he was a, a free agent. But you can't go after a superstar like Phil Kessel, an uh, experience last night from from John Scott, can you? No, I don't think so. I, I don't think that's the role of, of <laughs> that player to to do that. If, if you, Gratton you, did you, that, what would you? You can't, Jay. Result, but you what was last night. You, you can't. But if he does, what are you going to do? Leave yourself vulnerable by not having a guy? No, that's the thing. I mean, again, that's uh, you know we we believe that there is still a role for that, and you know we've had uh, it's been a spirited preseason for our team. Uh, you know, Gratz has fought a, a couple of times, and uh, Patrick Seeloff, one of our young kids, fought. I mean, we, you know, Shane O'Brien has dropped the gloves. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna back away from that stuff. But and, but Jay, if if uh, McGratton goes after uh, Eberly, jumps Eberly at a faceoff, is, is that his role? No, I don't think that it is. That's and, and I mean it's like Colt North. He jumps Kane at a face. Is that their role? I yeah, I'm yeah. not buying that's their role. What happened here? I I understand the tough guy. I understand where Kippy's coming from. That it's an important role, and you too, Jay. It, but it's got to be def- a defined role. And it yeah, and you exactly. and they know. And Gratton's smart guy. He fought Brett Gallant, you know, which was a, a heavyweight fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and you know, that's that's again. I I, I don't know that anybody would define the the tough guy role as as going after Kessel or as you said you know jumping Jordan Eberly off of a face off that's I, I don't think that's their role Jay if Bre- if McGratton came up to you and, and and had what he thought was a a good reason to jump an Eberly or anyone else would you not stand by your guy well, I think it's always important to stand by your players. Uh, obviously, if that was, you know, if that happened, you'd you'd want to make sure that you had a discussion about what what do you think that good reason to do it is. You know, if it's because he he did something to one of our guys, and you know, you felt that 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 had to be done in the in the heat of the moment. You know, then maybe you, it's a little bit different. But yeah, you're always going to stand by your guys. I mean, that's you know, pretty pretty simple. If you're not going to stand by your guys, I'm I'm not sure. You know, from a management standpoint, what that—that that seems to me that that's our role. Yeah. Jay, uh, looking at your goaltending, um, if you can, if you want to come back to the fighting, you can. But I, I just want to talk on your goaltending there. I mean, you've got Ramo, Gary Ram, Ramo, Ramo from the KHL at five plus million. Uh, you've got the kid from Switzerland. You got Joey McDonald. Is anything sorting itself out at this particular point? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, you know, it's, we, we've, we've seen a mixed bag so far. Uh, we played a split squad game to open up the season up in Edmonton and here in the, in the dome. And we played, uh, Ramo to start and he was not very sharp. And then Barra came in at the midway point, which was the plan. And he was very good. Gave us a chance. We came from a five, two deficit at the end of one to, to end up winning in the shootout. And, you know, Barra looked very good in that game. And, and then, he got the start against Ottawa in Saskatoon and, and was not as sharp. He was not as good. And then the next night in Regina against an Islander split squad group, Bear got the start. I'm sorry, uh, Ramo got the start. And Ramo was, was very, very good. So uh, each one's going to play one of our final two. Uh, Ramo's going to play tonight against the Rangers. And the Rangers are bringing a you know pretty good squad in. It, it looks like uh, you know pretty much an NHL lineup. And then... Phoenix on Wednesday is our final preseason game, and Bear is going to get that game, and we'll see where we are. Is this still a three-person race or not? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, you know, Joey McDonald has been uh, what we expected from him in terms of, you know, he, he's a pretty steady guy. Um, you know, he's. I, I'm not sure that he has taken the step to show that he, you know, he he's the number one guy, but... At this point in time, it's still uh, three guys that are competing for two spots, and we're trying to sort it out and figure out who's going to be between the pipes when we open the season in Washington. Are you are you disappointed that nobody's been able to just grab the grab the position? Well, I don't know. I think I think it's early enough that again, you know, the the two guys coming in from Europe are are still feeling their way through it, and and they're getting comfortable and getting adjusted and working with Clint Malarchuk. You know, if there's a if there's a disappointment, I I suppose it's that, you know, because Joey knew the situation. I mean, Joey was here 
certainly uh, Joey had enough conversations with uh, last season with Mika Kiprasov to know that Kipper was in all likelihood not coming back. Would have been nice to see uh, Joey come in and you know be in phenomenal shape and 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 demonstrate that he wanted to be that number one. And again, while he's been he's been okay, uh, you know he didn't like he didn't distinguish himself in terms of how he came in as far as his fitness and conditioning and everything. So he's out of shape. No, he's not out of shape. It's just that again he didn't uh, you know he he didn't take another step to say I have this opportunity to be the number one. I'm going to train differently i'm going to come in you know kind of came back in in the same uh, situation as when he left so jay can you give us a, an update on camillary is he gonna is he gonna get another exhibition game in here i don't know i don't know he's making progress uh, every day it's a little bit better uh our goal with them is to make sure that he's ready for the opener when we play in washington to start the season we only have the two games left we he won't play tonight and then the only other uh, preseason action that we have is Wednesday night, so I'm not sure whether he'll get a, another one in or not. He's in the he's in the the final year of his of his deal here. Obviously, the the game plan moving forward is you know slow and steady. We believe, anyways. Um, is this a guy that you see long term still in there? He's, he's he's not old by any stretch. No, he's not old. Uh, it, it is clearly something that uh, that's part of the evaluation process that we'll go through as an organization this year. We've talked to the guys, and he's not the only guy in that situation. Matt Stajan is in the last year of his deal. Lee Stempniak is in the last year of his deal. And, and we've had the conversations. They started back with the exit meetings at the end of last season that, you know, we think it's incumbent upon us to identify the right veteran guys going forward because we believe if we have the right veteran guys and we have the right leadership within that room within that veteran group that you know it, it doesn't mean that the rebuild has to be as long then that if you keep the right guys so uh you know clearly cammy is one of those guys that, that that's part of the evaluation process as we go along this season chatting with flames general manager jay feaster as calgary works its way through the preseason with a three and two record so far jay just on the rebuild can you give us an update on the young guys like uh sean monahan barchi and and Max Reinhardt or any other kids that have that have taken a step for you to that have a chance to to really jumpstart the rebuild and make your team as as junior eligible players. Like yeah, Monahan. Uh, Monahan has been very very good. He he's had a real good camp. We're certainly pleased with what he's done. Reinhardt uh, had a good camp. He got hurt. He he missed some time, but he'll play again tonight. And he has certainly uh, asserted himself and put himself into that mix for us. The other guy who's been really good, and and we're just it's it's uh, really really pleased with the turnaround in his game and and in, in his preparation is Michael Furland. Uh, you know, he Furley bounced around last year, yeah. couldn't get in the lineup in Abbotsford, went to Utah, went back to junior. He came in about 25 pounds lighter this year, and just a total different sense of purpose. And he's been very good. So uh, he's looked good. Corbin Knight, who we acquired uh, from the Florida Panthers, and you know, he just finished his collegiate career at uh, North Dakota. He's been very good. Roman Horak, uh, he's been very good. Lance Buma. So yeah, the the kids have the kids have done all right. When the kids are that close, like Amonahan, Jay, is it now almost a given that they will get those first nine games in to evaluate? Is it a freebie for you to do that, or is it um, a question of whether or not you want to start the season? taken away someone else's ice time that may have, have earned it over the course of 82 games. Yeah, we've, we've talked about it a lot already as, as a management group, and, and we've talked to Brian about it and get his thoughts on it. And, you know, at the end of the day, we need to make the right decision both for the organization and for the young man in terms of Monaghan as far as his development. Thus far, uh, you know, through he, he has played, we've played a total of five preseason games, but two of them have been split squad games. So the most that any guy would have played is three games. He's played in three, and the three that he's played, he he has not looked out of place. And, in fact, the game against the Islanders, uh, you know, in Regina, I thought he was really good. And so now, again, he's in the lineup tonight. We'll get a, a, another read based on the fact that, like I said, I think New York's bringing a, you know, a pretty NHL-ready uh, lineup in here. And then, again, he'll play on Wednesday against Phoenix, and we'll sit down then as a group and decide, uh, does he start with us? Do we give him those nine? And even further, if we do give him those nine, 
how do we space those nine? You know, is is it a case where we we play them in the first nine, or is it a case where you know we we maybe extend it a little bit? So all of those things are still options. And like I said, we'll sit down with Brian and you know the rest of the hockey operations department here and the coaches and figure it out after after the final. Pre-season if you had game. to make the decision today, would he stay? If we had to make the decision today, he would stay yeah. with us to start for sure. How's Brian doing on his mandate of being a backgrounder? Is that working well? Is he because I've nicknamed him the backgrounder, and I'm just wondering has he stayed true to his word? And what is his definition of background? For, for the record, Jay, <laughs> Mac was is supposed to be a backgrounder on this show, <laughs> and and it doesn't work out that way. <laughs> a little bit like Brian, Berkeley. honestly, and and uh, Brian's been great, uh, and he's been great as a backgrounder there. <laughs> There truly, there's, there's not been a single time since he's been here where he says, you know, I, I need to, I need to be driving the bus on this. He, uh, you know, he's been great. He, he has been a, a great resource for us and a great sounding board. And, you know, that we take issues to him or he raises issues with us, and uh, he'll ask about a player and we'll say we don't have any time for that guy, and he'll say, well, I think you're wrong. And we, you know, we sit down with John Weisbrot as part of that as the assistant GM, and we'll talk about it and. Uh, it really has. It's been great. With Jay Feaster, Calgary Flames general manager, as we work our way towards uh, the start of the NHL uh, regular season, and you look at your team right now and uh, in a rebuilding phase, but realistically, wh- what do you see as, as far as a performance of the Calgary Flames this year? Well, the, the big thing from our perspective is that you know we, we have to commit to, to playing the team concept and we have to have 23 guys committed to playing the way Bob and, and the coaching staff want them to play. You know, in in my mind, the the whole needs to be greater than the sum of its parts. And obviously, you know, one of the big things we're going to have to get is the goaltending. What I do believe is that, and and we've talked about this as a group. We've talked about it with our new captain, with Mark Giordano. There, there's a different feeling right now in in training camp. There's you know, I, I think the young players do recognize that for the first time in a very long time there is true opportunity. Uh, there is a new leadership group. There's a new captain in that room. Uh, you know, there's a new president of hockey operations. There's a new way to, to go about things. And it, it really, from that standpoint, it's it's been good. And, you know, that's what we're looking for is that our work ethic is how we're going to have to be defined this year. And, you know, we think we have some pretty good players. And, again, we believe that we can be competitive. But, you know, we can only be competitive if we're all on the same page. If we, if we have guys who decide that you know they they want to be solo acts instead of part of the band, then then it could be a long season for us. Jay, just a quick thought on Mark being the captain, um, and do you, do you worry about maybe uh, the weight that he'll feel on his shoulders off the ice to succeed a guy like Jerome McGinley? No, honestly, I don't, and I'll tell you why, Nick. I I think that. You know, this this guy is somebody who has been a leader within that room, uh, you know, without necessarily having the C on his chest. And, and you know, we saw it when Jerome, when, when we traded Jerome. It was interesting because not just Mark Giordano, but any number of guys who heretofore you didn't hear a lot from, and, and you certainly didn't hear him talk in the room, they suddenly found their voices. And, and that's, you know, I, I, I honestly believe that, Gio's at a stage in his career and certainly in his life where he doesn't view it that, you know, I, I have to replace Jerome McGinla. He looks at it and says, I'm, I'm now the captain of this team. Uh, he's bought into the idea that we have to do it as a team and play the team concept. He's, you know, he's an adjunct of, of that coaching staff in terms of selling the message. And so, no, I, I'm not concerned about his ability to, uh, to handle that. I, I think he's going to be great. Jay, revealing stuff. We really appreciate you taking the time for us today. Good luck, Jay.